Hello everyone! In today's lesson we will be studying transformations of functions. By the end of this video, you will master transformations of functions and understand them deeply. We will study transformations like translation, reflection, and dilation. We will start with this vertical translation. And we will start with this function here, y or f of x equals x squared. This is the basic quadratic function that we will be using with most of the transformations in today's lesson. This is the basic quadratic function that passes through the origin 0, 0. Because if you replace x by 0 here, y will be 0 squared, which is 0. And now if we graph this, here we have the origin 0, 0, the x-axis and the y-axis. So if we graph the parabola, it will be here. This is the graph of the quadratic y equals x squared and it passes through the origin. Now we will start here with the first translation. What happens if we add a number like 2 to the function f but outside of the function, not here inside of the brackets with x? We add 2 to the function f or y. So we have f of x plus 2 and f is x squared. So it will be x squared plus 2. Here we added 2 to the function f or y. So the movement or the translation will be across the y-axis up or down. But since we added a number, it will be 2 units up. Check now here. In the new function, if you replace x by 0, y will be 0 plus 2, which is 2. So this will be the new vertex of, I mean, this will be the vertex of the new quadratic, 0, 2, which will be here on the y-axis. Here we have the point 0, 2, and this is the graph of y equals x squared plus 2. As you see here, the graph is shifted 2 units up. So here we have shifting or translation 2 units up. So here, since we added 2, it will be a translation or we can say shifting two units up. Now of course if we added five instead of two it will be a translation of five units up and the graph will shift upward more up to five. And generally speaking if we add a positive number k to the original function f this will be a translation of k units up and the point x, y will be transformed into x, y plus k. We add the same number k to the y coordinate, which is in our example 2. So we add 2 to the y coordinate. For example, another point on this original function would be 4 and y will be 4 squared, 16. If you move 2 units up, 4 will be as it is, but we will add 2 to the y coordinate 16, which will be 18. If we move up 2 units from 16, it will be at 18. Now here, of course, when we subtract a number instead of adding, it will be then a translation of 1 unit down. Here we have f of x minus 1. f of x is the same function here, x squared. So here, if you replace x by 0, y will be 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And this point, 0, negative 1, will be here, for example. Then, if we graph the parabola, it will be like this. So as you see, it's shifted 1 unit down. So this is the graph of y equals x squared minus 1. So here we have a translation of one unit down. We have translation. Now, generally speaking, if we subtract k from f of x, it will be a translation of k units down. And the point x, y will become x, y minus k. We will subtract the same number k from the y coordinate. So for example, if you have a point like 5, 25, when you translated one unit down, it will be 5. Here we will have 25 minus 1, which is 24. Now we will move on to horizontal translation. Here we have the basic graph x squared again before any horizontal translation. So now, horizontal translation happens when we add or subtract numbers inside the bracket with x. 
not outside as we did before. Here, we added 2 to x, so the movement will be across the x-axis right or left. But here, since we added 2, it will be a translation of 2 units to the left, not to the right as we might think. Here, in transformations, x always performs in the opposite way of what we think. So here, someone might say when we add 2, it will move to the right 2 units, but here, no, it will be to the left. And now we will understand why. First, let's find the function f of x plus 2 itself. As we see, f of x is equal to x squared. So f of x plus 2 will be, we will replace the x by x plus 2. So instead of x, we have x plus 2 squared. And here, try now to replace x by negative 2, for example, to make it easier. If we replace x by negative 2, then y will be negative 2 plus 2, which is 0 squared, and that will be 0. Negative 2, 0 is here on the x-axis, negative 2, 0. So if we graph the parabola, it will be here, and as you see, it's moved 2 units to the left, not to the right. So here we have a translation of 2 units left. And of course, if we added, let's say, 5, it will be f of x plus 5, and that will be 5 units left. And generally speaking, if we add a number, a positive number k inside with x, it will be a translation of k units to the right, and the point x, y will be transformed to x minus k, y. It will be minus k, not plus k. To move to the left, you subtract the same number from x. For example, if we have on the original function here a point like 4, 16, if we move two unit, I mean if you move two units to the left, it will be 2, 16. So we will subtract 2 from 4. 4 minus 2 will be 2. And similarly, if we subtract a number instead of adding here inside, so f of x minus 3, it will be translation to the right. Here it will be translation, 3 units to the right. f of x is x squared, so f of x minus 3 will be then x minus 3 squared. We replace x by x minus 3. Here in the new function, if you replace x by 3, then y will be 3 minus 3, 0 squared or 0. This point 3, 0 will be here on the x-axis, 3, 0, and the parabola will be like this. So as you see here, the graph moved from the original one, the red one, to the new one, 3 units to the right. So here, we have translation 3 units right. And generally speaking, if you have y equals f of x minus k, if you subtract k from x, it will be translation k units to the right, and the point x, y will become x plus k, y. So we will add the number k to move to the right. For example, if you have 5, 25, and then you move to the right 3 units, it will be 5 plus 3, which is 8, 25. Now we will move on to vertical stretch. Here we have the quadratic x squared again. Vertical stretch happens when we multiply a function like f of x by a number from the outside, like here for example 3. We have 3 multiplied by this f of x, which is 3x squared. Let's now compare the coordinates of the two functions. Here, in the original one, if you replace x by 1, for example, y will be 1 squared, which is 1. If you replace x by, let's say, 4, y will be 4 squared, 16. But in the new one here, if you replace x also by 1, y will be here, we do 1 squared, then we multiply by 3, it will be 3. And if we replace x by 4 here, 4 squared will be 16, multiplied by 3, 48. So we have 4, 48. 
Compare now here. We have the same x coordinate before and after transformation, and here as well. But for the y coordinate, as you see, from 1 to 3, we multiplied by 3, and from 16 to 48, it's multiplied by 3 as well. And that's because we multiplied by 3 here. And this is what we call a vertical stretch by a scale factor of 3. Every y coordinate will be multiplied by 3. And if we graph both to see the difference between them, here we have the original function f of x equals x squared, uh, which passes through the point as we see here. For example, 1, 1. Here we have 1, 1. And for the new one, here, uh, for this one, also it passes through 0, 0. If you replace x by 0 here, y will be 0. So we also have the origin. And we have this point, 1, 3. 1, 3 will be here. We have also 1 here, as you see. 1, 2, 3, it will be here. So the new parabola then will be here. As you see, the new one is narrower or stretched toward the y-axis. Here we have y equals 3x squared. Now, generally speaking, when we multiply a function by a number like a from the outside, we will have a vertical stretch by a scale factor of a. The y-coordinate will be then multiplied by a. So, for example, here, uh, if you have a point 5, 25, then we have a scale factor of 3, so it will be 5 as it is, 25 multiplied by 3 will be 75. Now let's move on to horizontal stretch. Now anything horizontal means it has to do with x, not y. We can get horizontal stretch when we multiply x inside by a number, like here for example 2. f of x is x squared, so f of 2x will be then 2x squared. We replace the x by 2x. So we have 2x squared. You can also expand it and it will be 4x squared. Now let's compare the coordinates of these two functions. For example here, if you replace x by 4, y will be 4 squared 16. If you replace x by 6, y will be 36. But in the new one here, if you replace x by 2, y will be 2 times 2, 4, 4 squared, 16. And if you replace x by 3, you will have 36. Compare now here. We have the same y coordinate, 36 and 36, and here, the same y coordinate. So let's compare the x coordinate. Here, it was 4, but now it's 2. So it's divided by 2, or multiplied by half. Here as well, from 6 to 3, we multiply by half. And that's why here, since we multiplied by 2, this will be a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of 1 over 2, the reciprocal of this number, or half, not 2 here. Because as we said, x always performs in the opposite way of what we think. Here, Every x is multiplied by 1 over 2. That's why the scale factor is 1 over 2. And generally, if we multiply x inside by a number, then it will be a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of 1 over a. The reciprocal of a. And every x coordinate will be then divided by a. Here, for example, if you replace x by 10, y will be 10 squared or 100. Then, since we have a scale factor of 1 over 2, the new point here will be 10 divided by 2, 5, and the same y coordinate, 100. Let's now move on to reflection about the x-axis. Generally, we get reflection when we multiply the function inside or outside by negative. But here, to get reflection about the x-axis, we multiply the function by negative 1, but in the outside here. So we have negative f of x, which is negative x squared. If we multiply the function f or y by negative, then the reflection will be across the x-axis. Here we'll understand why. If you replace x here by 1, for example, y will be 1 as well. But here, 
it will be negative 1 because when x is 1 we have 1 squared 1 then negative it will be negative 1 this is the original quadratic again y equals x squared and for example here we have the point 1 1 which is this so the new one will be here we have the point 1 negative 1 which is here x is 1 as well but y is negative 1 then the parabola will be like this so as you see we have a reflection upside down in the x-axis here the x-axis is the mirror line so in this reflection the y coordinate will be multiplied by negative 1 for example if you have 3 9 then after reflection it will be 3 negative 9 we multiply every y coordinate by negative 1 generally speaking if we multiply a function by negative from the outside it will be a reflection about the x-axis and every y coordinate will be multiplied by negative but the x will remain unchanged as we saw here finally now we will study reflection about the y-axis and here we will have a new function y or f of x equals x plus 2 which is a straight line whose gradient m is 1 and the y-intercept is 2 if we graph this line here uh, the y-intercept is 2 which is here 0 2 and the line will be like this with a positive gradient now we can obtain reflection about the y-axis if we multiply x inside by a negative number or if we replace x by negative x so f of negative x will be you will replace this x by negative x but the two will be as it is no change so this is the reflected function it's also a straight line whose gradient is negative one but the y-intercept is also two like this so it has the same y-intercept here two so if we graph it it will be like this uh, this is y equals negative x plus 2 and here we have y equals x plus 2 as you see it's reflected right left or in the y-axis here the y-axis is the mirror line and generally when we multiply x by negative inside it will be a reflection about the y-axis the x will be multiplied by negative but the y will be unchanged so for example here if you replace x like randomly 5 then y will be 5 plus 2 which is 7 down if you replace x here by negative 5 then y will be negative and a negative 5 will be 5 plus 2 which is 7 again we have the same y coordinate as you see here but x is multiplied by negative if the point 5 7 is here for example then the reflection point will be here on the left which is negative 5 7 here we have the point negative 5 7 and here we have 5 7 so it's reflection in the y-axis I hope that you have found the video helpful and wish you the best in your IB math preparation journey